Hello friends, I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're with me today. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's become actually very familiar to me within the last decade, and that's the subject of Christian media. Christian media was really instrumental in my life in in many ways when I was going through a very dark time. It was something God used in in a positive way for me. But I want to talk about the the history, the, the roots and the origins that have really helped shape the culture of the church. I want to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to talk about the things that we might be able to do better. And you know what? The guest that I've invited today, I know him pretty well. His name is Paul Crouch Jr. (laughs) He is my co-host for life. He's handsome. Um, This is his bio. He's handsome. He's debonair. He's, um, yeah, well, you know, let's let's talk about who you really are, right? Going, keep going. (laughs) He's an American Christian broadcaster. (laughs) He is a television producer and a film producer. And I'm just very proud of the man that I married, but not because of the things that he does. But baby, I'm proud of who you are in your heart. You've walked through a lot of things. You're not a perfect person. I'm not a perfect person, but I'm just so grateful that God has put us together for to journey the rest of our lives out with Jesus. And you know what? I I can't think of a better person I'd want to be with today. You're in California and I'm in Texas right now. And because that's where our schedules are, but I love you. And I want to thank you for being willing to join me today. Well, thank you, baby. And it's, it's an honor to be here. And, and I can honestly say at this point, I'm being interviewed by the most beautiful interviewer ever, (laughs) um, but I maybe am a little biased, but Thank you. But, you know, to be serious, I think uh, this is a great subject. And I think something Mm -hmm. that really does need to be unpacked because, you know, when you get into media or Christian media or ministry of any type, it's like, be careful what you wish for, because Mm -hmm. the media is very powerful. It can influence, it can do a lot of good, but it can also do a lot of bad. You know, it's like putting a, a scalpel in the hands of a trained surgeon. You know, a scalpel can save lives, but it can also take life Mm -hmm. if it's not used properly. So that's kind of what I think we want to unpack and talk about a little bit. Yeah, because it's very complex. There's many moving parts to that. There are spiritual elements. There are, um, you know, production elements and uh, just so many moving parts, relational elements that we we want to talk about. And I, I know we only have 30 minutes for our show and We've already eaten into some of that. But, you know, one of the things that uh, I want everybody to know, this is just totally unscripted. This is just you and me. We're talking, baby. But um, one of the things that I think has been, I don't know, that double double edged sword, perhaps, or double two sided coin is that people have perceptions, at least in the past um, th- over the past 30, 40 years, there have been perceptions that whatever they hear on uh, broadcast television or see on the news or read in print, they think is the gospel truth. They think it's a hundred percent truth. And they're gonna, you know, start to form their beliefs around that. And they're not really doing the study themselves. So in some ways, has it made us um has it dumbed us down a little bit spiritually and caused us not to search the scriptures out per se uh, for oh. ourselves? It's a, no, it's a good question, and I'm not going to get into the political side of fake yeah, news yeah. and all that stuff that we dealt right. with with the Trump administration. But in Christian television, like you said, just because you hear it on Christian television or just because you hear something from your favorite pastor does not necessarily make mm-hmm. it theologically true or theologically accurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about this earlier that I've been in this media my whole life. I mean, literally, my earliest memories was my father working for the Assemblies of God in their film department. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you there's young people watching this that don't even know what film is. But 
you know, it was the earliest way to communicate the gospel through mass media, through film, mm -hmm. through projectors, through uh, that form of media. But okay, then, hold that thought because some of our viewers, I didn't say this, might not realize that you came from the, uh, your parents founded Trinity Broadcasting Network, otherwise known as TBN. Correct. Well, and that was the next phase of my life after the film department with my father is my parents in 1973 formed uh, Trinity Broadcasting and started what has become one of the world's largest networks out of a, a building, you know, the size of, of our bathroom. And God blessed that ministry mm -hmm. and it grew and it expanded. Uh, but, you know, what's the, what we talked about earlier was that some of the teaching that you, you know, we probably did early on out of ignorance or out of desperation may have not been the most theologically sound. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, some of the best TV programs aren't necessarily the most theologically sound, you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to backing it up with scripture. Now, listen, the positive of Christian TV is, is unprecedented. I know for a fact that there have been over 50 million people that called mm -hmm. into TBN wow. over the years and accepted their, uh, gave their lives to the Lord over our phone systems. Yeah. Uh, we got into nations and into countries that we would have never gotten into in person because mm -hmm. of satellite, because of the internet, because of broadcasting. So there's a lot of good that TBN has has done in all of the Christian broadcasters, not just TBN. But like I said, sometimes the best programming theologically isn't the most exciting programming. Mm -hmm. And we as Christians, we have to check ourselves. We have to watch this person and say, wait a minute, he may be exciting, he may be a great speaker, yeah. he may be yelling. Good TV, yeah. Make good TV and sweating, <laughs> you know, yeah. jumping around the stage. But is he really preaching the true gospel and what mm. we can back up uh, with scripture? And that's what gets a little bit, yeah. you know, uh, we could debate that uh, till the till the Lord comes, as you know. Right, right. That's true. And I think that that gets into even from a production standpoint, those um, that that margin for error, that room for error where we can lean into, uh, you know, how do we build a bigger and better uh, uh, program for viewers? And we're not really thinking necessarily about the purity of the content. And so a lot of the reason that we're having this discussion today um, is we want to encourage those who are uh, working in media. I mean, we're during this pandemic, it, media just exploded uh, on many fronts because that's all people had as an outreach. And so right. even, even churches have had to uh, kind of redefine and and change their whole outreach. So, right. and you've been very instrumental in consulting with those people. But I, you know, it, we work together so well because you do a lot of the real statistical stuff or the the real um, technological stuff, and and I lean more into the the heart and soul and and spiritual issues of things. And so I think we kind of ground each other. And so I'm always thinking, okay, how do we point to where, what would Jesus have us do? And so that's always like such a conviction for me and something that I really had to learn to live my life by a long time ago when I hit my wall, you know, and saying, okay, Lord, I am not going to run after those counterfeit things anymore. I'm done with projecting images. And, and, you know, we all are subject when we're in media, we're subject to the criticisms and to the judgments of others who want to judge us uh, according to their opinion, whatever filter they want to put us through about why we're doing what we're doing. Well, let me jump in here because you got my brain going in like eight okay. directions. Jump in. I saw it all over your face. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> you know, when TBN first started in 1973, do you know who feared Christian television more than anything? It wasn't ABC, NBC, or CBS. It was the local church. They thought that if Christian television caught on, that they were so ignorant that they thought the pews would dry up, the offering plates would dry up, 
and it was it was just ridiculous. The church for years preached against the media. They preached against radio when it came along. They preached against movies. You know, some of the best movies ever made were the Bible movies right around, you know, the early 1900s. Hollywood said, this is a great medium. Let's capture Bible movies. Well, the Christians wouldn't go see them. So guess what happened? The devil said, I'll use that medium to my glory. And he has used <laughs> films in an incredible way to influence and change culture. You know, the horror films that have come out as a result of the church not taking its rightful place, not jumping on the media into radio. We should have been first into radio. We should have been first into films. We should have been first into television and the internet. Oh my gosh, when the internet came around, churches were like, oh, don't go on the internet. Don't use it. It's this, it's evil. <laughs> That is absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. My father was told as a little boy mm -hmm. that if he went into a movie theater to go see Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, that if yep. the Lord returned while he was sitting in that theater, he would have been he left. He would go to high. hell. Yeah. And go to hell, just flat mm -hmm. out. So yeah. ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah. We yeah. must use every medium possible, every opportunity possible to reach the lost. And that is what mm -hmm. I think both of us, like you said, have adopted and, and uh, we're using our lives for you again, more on the software side. I do. I can get into the weeds with different churches and production companies yeah. on cameras and lighting and, you know, the hardware side because you've got to have both. You've got to have yeah. a good message. You've got to have good preaching. You've got to have theologically sound, but it can't be done unprofessionally. Nobody's yeah. going to sit around and watch you out of focus on one camera. It's just not going to happen. You're one swipe away from yeah. the next preacher. So we've got to do it with excellence, and that's part of my calling. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it certainly is a tool that's been good for telling story. Uh, as Jesus told parables, that's what we're doing now when, when we share our testimonies or we share stories. And, but, you know, we're in a different culture now than we were 30, 40 years ago. And so the church is no longer, um, you know, calling these things uh, labeling them negative, but they're running after it. And so I think that we've got to really be careful about saying, you know, um, really checking our hearts with God and saying, what's my motive? You know, search me, God, keeping my motive pure and not just building some sort of trying to build some sort of an empire for my sake or for my identity. And this is where, you know, in this culture, um, things can easily get so skewed and it's not my place to judge anybody. I'm not saying that, but you know, as well as I do, that things can creep in. We can have the best of intentions and pain because we are human beings. We are fallible. We have failures. And we, um, if we are not closely studying the scriptures and remaining present with the Lord, it's really easy for the enemy to uh, want to get in and poison the batch. And I think that, you know, I've likened that to, and I, listen, a theologian might blow me out of the water and say, oh, you're totally wrong here. But I see something in the Old Testament where uh, God told his, his people to tear down the the altars that were built in the high places and i really see this kind of parallel world here where you know what would the high places be for us today and i think it's the places of influence the places that that give us a perception of power and so you know what are we running after is is it the power to be somebody or is it the power that jesus gives us to overcome all the obstacles this is really critical here Right. Are we are we seeking after his cup of power or the one that the enemy offers us? And so now you have watched your parents make sacrifices and you've also watched them fail in other areas. Right. And so this isn't you know, this isn't intended to be about your parents or anything, but but you and your journey. And I'd like you to speak into that a little bit. Well, it, it yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, thank the Lord 
that God can use broken vessels or flawed vessels. Right. Because we are yes. flawed. If you don't yes. think you're flawed, then then that in it <laughs> that in and of itself is a flaw. So just mm -hmm. know that. And you and I, you know, if if you want to get a glimpse into what my world was like a little bit or TBN, my <clears throat> my parents were far from perfect. In fact, uh, we could do a whole show just on that, which maybe we will at some point. But you and I just saw a movie the other day about the eyes of Tammy Faye. Mm -hmm. And I was very close to Tammy. She was mm -hmm. really, as a 12, 13, 14 year old little boy, she had a great spiritual influence on me because she was so real and so raw. Uh, but God used her anyway. In fact, the one part of the movie that they left out that you and I talked about was as a uh, 10 or 12 little year old little girl, when she got filled with the Holy Spirit, her prayer when she got home that evening was, Lord, don't let my life be boring. Mm -hmm. And it was far from boring. And again, be careful what you pray for. But, <laughs> you know, the, we saw in that movie and in their story and in Jim's book, and, and my parents had some very similar parallels. They were seeking at sometimes high places. Was Were Jim and Tammy really focused just on the Lord, focused on this? And, and it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to kind of deal with as a pastor goes from a 100-member church to a 10,000-member church. Do they lose focus on the people, on mm -hmm. what God called them to do? You know, you're a big target as you get higher up the mountain. That's true. Yeah. And it's lonely at the top. Of yes. The I mm -hmm. saw with my parents as they, as TBN grew in stature and power and outreach, you know, they started to question their own friends. Are yeah. they my friends because mm -hmm. of TBN? Right. Are they right. My friends because they want a uh, platform, because they yeah. want to come on and pitch their ministry or their outreach. Uh, and, and, Slowly, by uh, year by year, I saw my parents get lonelier and lonelier. Isolated. They're more isolated and, and people around them, you know, are they with you? Uh, you know, what purpose and why are they with you? Mm -hmm. So that's a tough thing to deal <clears throat> with in any form of ministry as it grows, as you get more successful. Be aware that, like I said, it's lonely at the top of the mountain. Yeah, and yeah. Ministry is not always, you know, hugs and people getting saved and hands in the air and wonderful letters telling you how great you are and thank you that my son yeah. was healed or saved or touched. You know, you get a letters lot of criticism. saying, why are you such an idiot? Why mm -hmm. did you say this? Why did you say that? You know, oh, your story's so bad. Well, mine's 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. You know, you got some of that when you wrote your book about... Yeah abuse. And one lady yeah. said, you think that was abuse? Dude, I was abused. <laughs> yeah. worse. So I yeah. had one lady recently say, yeah, I read about, you know, three pages of your book. And I went, yeah, this one's not for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> God bless you for being honest. It was pretty wow. funny. But you know, I, I, with what you're talking about, I feel like that, you know, in in the the generation before us, we didn't know as much as we are learning now about um, our soul issues and about our how flawed we are. And listen, I think that there was a certain amount of innocence that your parents had in just going forward in their obedience. And it's somewhere along the way, you know, for every single one of us, the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And so what we're what we're really trying to point out here isn't all of our flaws. It is that it's it's about power. And so with if you're working in media to to those who are watching and and want to glean, if you're working in media, there what you're holding is the potential for power. And whatever you do with that is is really where you can go either, you know, north or south. And I, I so we would encourage you to stay the course with Christ and never allow that to be 
the thing that's going to lead you by the nose or be the idol. And I think we've had a lot of misconceptions in the past, but you know, we, we have a few minutes left and I wish we had much longer and maybe we'll talk about this again, uh, you know, uh, take two, but, um, I, I feel like, how, what can we say, you having come from a, a whole lifetime of working in Christian media and uh, even secular uh, avenues of media, how can we do this better? And what's it going to take for us to take up the sword, you know, and uh, or, or really, I said take up the sword, but that's really, that's really not it. We need to take up our cross and follow him. How do we do this? in the, the cruciform lifestyle and uh, do it better. Well, I, you, I, I agree in the fact that we are all going to have to take up a cross. Some of these guys, some of these pastors, you and I have talked about this. You know, there's a great podcast, and I'll only mention it because mm-hmm. it's public on Mars Hill, yeah. you know, the rise and fall of and Mars fall. Hill. Listen, that has played out a thousand times. It's just you've never heard of it or it's not been chronicled quite as well as that 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 particular situation. If you're going to go into media, if you're going to go, it, it's a two-edged sword. You can bring, bring great healing, you can bring great comfort, and you can bring great harm to people. Mm-hmm. Those people that, you know, fell when Mars Hill collapsed. Uh, I, I've seen many, many people uh, just devastated when Crystal Cathedral collapsed and now it's gone and it's now a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that story is not unique. It's played out for 2000 years uh, throughout Mm -hmm. the centuries. It's just not been made so available through media. So focus on the Lord, stay connected to him, stay connected to the word. Always remind yourself, why am I doing this? Am I Mm -hmm. doing it to be a rock star, to get likes, to be cool or for money or for money. That is the greatest danger. I saw even my own parents uh, who started from nothing. I mean, literally we had no money, but as you get a little more wealth and a little more uh, affluence, it's hard to go backwards. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, Johnny Carson had a famous line. He said, I've been rich and I've been poor and I like rich a lot better. And so, (laughs) Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and it he's no different, but mm-hmm. just staying focused on on why you're doing this, touching people's lives. There are millions of hurting people out there that are going through divorce, that are going through right. the loss of loved ones, going through COVID, going through uh, uh, uncertainty, insecurity, how to raise children, how not to raise children. You know, I mean, we're all inundated. And with- here's the heartbreak. Here's the travesty that can easily take place is as there's what is perceived as blessing, as as power increases with money, with influence. It's so easy to lose sight of those people who are Correct. broken, who are desperate, who need our care, who need our hearts and our compassion. And so, you know, I think that it, it really is a personal issue for every person uh, that's involved in any kind of platform. And yeah. there's so many platforms available now because of social media, which is evolving. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm sure you've heard that Facebook is now coming under a new name. They've had some scrutiny and some negative, uh, you know, connection with uh, uh, accusations and things. And so now there's a new name and they're, they're going to be doing it bigger and better than ever. So it, it forces us into this culture where things are constantly changing and uh, and growing, really, but uh, are evolving. And we have to be moving along with it, but not but remembering that we are in this world, but we're not of this world. Yeah. And that points to motive, right? It, absolutely. Absolutely. And I truly believe, Brenda, and I've shared this with several churches and with you, I believe the media is in the Bible. I believe John the Revelator literally saw the end times and he saw how we were going to reach the last generation through media. 
And I, I, I want to quote this real quick. There's a picture I, I printed. In fact, there you can see it. That is a communication satellite from the early 70s. And it was named Angel One was the name of that satellite. RCA launched that in the late 70s. TBN Trinity was the third customer on this satellite. And my wow. dad saw satellite. My dad understood satellite. John, had a vision. And had a, John, my, my dad had a great vision of satellite, but so did John the Revelator. And my dad used to quote this about once uh, a week. And he, you go to Revelation 14, 6, and it says very simply, then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. <clears throat> and I literally get choked up every time I read that because for years that this satellite circled the earth and it kind of looks like an angel if you want to, yeah. you know, that's upside down. It does. With the eyes and the wings. You know, yeah. John the Revelator, if he saw that, he wouldn't know what that is. The closest thing right. in his world would have been an angel. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, he saw that era. But then here's what got me and both of us kind of jumping up and down. If you go a few scriptures further, Revelation 14, 14. Uh, if I had asked you or any of our viewers, you watching, 20 years ago, what is a cloud or what is the cloud? A white puffy thing in the sky. Exactly. It's exactly <laughs> what it is. But right now, what is the cloud today? And literally, Brenda, you and I could not be doing what we're doing right now. You watching us would not be watching us if it weren't for the cloud. Right. The data, the little data streams, the ones and zeros that go in here and out yeah. are going through the Crazy. cloud. Here's what John saw a few scriptures later. I looked and there before me was a white cloud. And seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. <laughs> Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, not mm, a cloud, not a cloud, the cloud. Mm. Take your sickle and reap because the time has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And I, uh, and then so he, he was seated on the cloud, swung the sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. And I believe with all my heart that the cloud and the technology of the internet and the cameras and everything that we're doing is how the final harvest is gonna be reaped. And I truly believe that John the Revelator saw that over 2000 years ago, but it's up to us to make it happen, to be a part, to make good content, because <clears throat> both my parents, my sweet parents, are sitting in that uh, in heaven, looking over that balcony. I truly believe that. And Brenda, they're looking at you, they're looking at me, they're looking at each one of us that are watching this video that's a part of you know, creating a webcast or a podcast or a church service. They're looking over that balcony and they're saying, do not stop, do not stop. There's more to be done. Well, and that's the beauty of being with Jesus is that we see in full, not in part anymore. And, you know, here on this earth, we see in part, and I believe that that great harvest is all about the healing of our souls, the healing of the fragments and the the wounds and the things that evil has inflicted upon God's people. And so in this season, we have an opportunity to do it different and to do it better. And I believe just like Paul does that we're only just beginning and that if we cast our eyes back on Jesus and off of the things that do not matter, the things, listen, kingdoms come and kingdoms go. 
And all of the things that we build with our own hands, they will eventually fall. But what Jesus Christ builds is eternal. His kingdom is eternal. And so do everything with that as your goal, with that in mind, as you partner with him. Because if we don't partner with him, then we're just building the house by ourselves, right? And it's all in vain. And I, you know, I, I really believe with all of my heart that the enemy of our soul wants to keep us all tied up and bound in this place of division, in unforgiveness, resentment, anger, bitterness, and losing our faith where we're, our hearts are like stone. And uh, we have an opportunity in this time that the earth is really in a place of uh, tremendous pain, tremendous suffering, and you know, on every front. And uh, in, during this time of pandemic, you know, as our systems are being shaken, we have an opportunity to get back to the Christ, mm-hmm. back to what He says, back to the Scriptures, study them out for the, ourselves, because we've had decades of bad teachings, good mm-hmm. teachings, just kind of a mishmash soup of information and we have become very lazy in our faith and you know i didn't know that was really what we were going to talk about today but i knew there was something that you and i needed to discuss and and baby i just want to say that i believe in you and uh, i thank you for believing in me and my heart and whatever god you know the things that god has called us to we're just two simple people as well who want to say lord we're available to you and we want to be obedient because I believe the time is short. We don't know what it is, but it is short before his coming. And so, um, you know, for both of us, we just want to commit the rest of our lives to being obedient people, utilizing the skills and the things that God has placed within our hands to be able to reach those who are hurting, who are broken, who are confused, who have maybe lost their faith or, or never found it, never knew what that meant maybe don't really know who you are, but you're trying to. We want you to know the person of Jesus, and he's in the midst of us, and we're so thankful that he is, and uh, we just want to be able to bring um, a representation of who he is, his beauty in our brokenness. Do you have any last thoughts that you want to share? No, no, I I, I agree on all fronts. I just know... um, you know, there is much to be done. There is much mm-hmm. left to be done. And mm-hmm. I'm not a rapture guy. I don't know when we're getting out of here or zapped and <laughs> out. I don't really care. I just know <clears throat> there are hurting people. And, mm-hmm. you know, my dad understood literally as a college student, the first time he went on a radio microphone and he realized that you know, through shortwave and ham radio, that somebody on the other side of the earth could hear him talk, Mm -hmm. it just, light bulbs went off. And he said, we need to use this to talk about Jesus. And that's what I want to do. We have technology a million times more sophisticated than what he had, but Mm -hmm. our heart has still got to be the same, that we've got Mm -hmm. to communicate the loving, uh, nature of Jesus Christ, the saving power of Jesus Christ. You know, the technology changes, the way we get pictures and sound changes, but the message should never change. Amen. Well, I'm grateful for it, and I'm grateful for you. I just hit heart <laughs> a little thing. I don't know. <laughs> I wish could... everybody could see that. You sent me heart <laughs> emoji. That's really sweet. I love you, and uh, and I love doing life with you. <laughs> and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. I miss you. Yeah. So you I'll be there. Yeah. And there's some cute little faces. But listen, guys, I appreciate you coming and, and just sitting with us and being a part of our conversation. We want to do this um, just clean before God and uh, give it our, our best and give it our all. But that is because of the compassion that he's placed in our hearts for you. And we want you to be encouraged. So, uh, I am going to go ahead and end this program, and it's going to be hard to say goodbye to my cute husband's face, but uh, thank you for joining me, baby. And uh, we'll have to make another time to do this again. This was a lot of fun. But thank you, folks, for joining us, and 
We really appreciate you. You can find us at brendacrouch.com. And I invite you back to join us again for the next one. I'm Brenda Crouch. You enjoy your day.